The first week of the Otis McCain trial winding down, and today new testimony as a crime scene investigator takes the stand. Eric Hernandez has an update this noon. And officials trying to get the word out after a mosquito trap sample tested positive for the West Nile virus here in Bear County. Jonathan Coto explains what you need to know this noon. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. It is day five of the trial of Otis McCain and testimony now shifting to the investigation that began after Benjamin Marconi was killed. That's right, Erica Hernandez at the courthouse now and has the latest. Erica? Yeah, this morning court began with crime scene investigator Olivia, oh, excuse me, her name was Brenda Oliva. The day of the shooting, she took video of the crime scene as part of the investigation. That video shown in court to the jury this morning. You can see inside the police unit, Detective Marconi was driving bullet casings, pools of blood, as well as the traffic arms that the alleged suspect drove through. Each of these pieces of evidence also presented in court this morning. Will you please show this to the jury? And what are you showing to the jury? Um, it's a spent shell casing. Okay. And where was state's exhibit number 102, which is your item of evidence E3, where was that item located? Um, it was on the rear driver's seat behind the driver. Now, testimony is still ongoing right now. We'll have more on that later this afternoon. Live, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Erica. The flames are out, but investigators now have a tough job ahead. They have to figure out what exactly caused a huge fire in an apartment complex not too far from Kelly Field that broke out early this morning, and it happened in a building undergoing renovations, all of this in the 400 block of Gilmore. As Katrina Weber reports, it had other people wondering if they would lose their homes. Video captured by a resident at the preserve at the Port Apartments shows flames and smoke that could be seen by people from miles away. The fire broke out around 5.30 this morning and quickly moved through a building where no one was supposed to be living. Quite a bit of homeless activity in the area, so that is one thing we're looking at, that there may have been someone staying inside. The building appeared to be undergoing renovations. It was stripped of windows, doors, and even drywall. So there wasn't a whole lot to burn, but what did burn had the fire had complete access to run through the building. Part of it ended up collapsing. Luckily, no one fighting the fire was hurt. Firefighters managed to keep the flames to just this one area, and they say at no time were any other buildings in danger. Still, that didn't stop some people here from worrying. Our buildings are so close together. Like, if you could see where the fire was at, like when I came out, I could feel the heat from my front door. Miss Jen Garcia didn't waste any time. She was ready to leave. I just got my pictures and my social security birth certificates. That's it. And I was like, if we got to go, we got to go. Firefighters, meanwhile, had to stay. Gas from an underground pipe continued to fuel the fire. They had to keep watch until a CPS energy crew could cap it off. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office releasing the name of a woman found dead inside her far west side home on Wednesday night. She was identified as 57-year-old Carla Lynn Boyd. We spoke to neighbors who say that they are shocked by the gruesome scene that was found in their neighborhood. I never thought in my wildest dreams that anything like this would happen. And, you know, and, and just to know, like, like I said, I, I've been here three years. I never met her, you know, but just as know I saw her like three weeks ago walking in the morning when I do my morning walks. The Bear County Sheriff's Office now looking for a missing person in connection with the case. They are looking for Andrew Boyd Tettens. Investigators don't know if he's connected to the woman's death, but he is listed as missing in this case. He was last seen in a 2015 white Jeep Wrangler, the license plate number FZX9217. If you can help police find him, call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. And a shooting investigation on the east side continues this noon. Now, police still looking for the person who pulled the trigger. According to officers on the scene, they were called to an empty lot in the 800 block of South Walters. That's near MLK Drive. Police say two men got into an argument that ended with one of them pulling out a gun and firing his weapon. The suspect then taking off the victim, taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police tell us at least one of the men appeared to be homeless. 
We have some new details in an early morning crash that was on the west side. We've now learned that the victim died. The 58 year old was riding a motorized bicycle around one in the morning near Loop 1604 and Shanefeld Road. According to police, he was hit by a driver in an SUV. Officers say that driver in the SUV was trying to turn on to Weybridge Street. The bicyclist taken to the hospital in critical condition. He later died there. The SUV driver did stop to help and will not face any charges. And another update this noon, the Bear County Sheriff's Office says a beehive in South Bear County containing about 60,000 bees was removed. And this comes after a man died from bee stings Monday morning. That 73 year old man stung more than 300 times, all happening while he was cutting grass in the 17,000 block of State Highway 16 South. This is just north of Loop 1604. A neighbor tried to help him out. However, she says the man was covered in bees when first responders arrived. They put on protective suits to avoid the bee stings. Now, a BCSO spokeswoman saying the man was taken to the hospital. That's where he later died. The West Nile virus has now been found in Bear County. This coming after the Office of Emergency Management tested a mosquito trap that was on the far northeast side. Jonathan Cotto reports officials now launching a campaign to inform you so that you can ward off this illness. A sample from a pool of mosquitoes in the area of Ferry Sage Drive near FM 78 was collected for testing. The results, not with the Bear County Office of Emergency Management, were expecting to find. We learned only yesterday that one of the samples, we set up these monitoring sites and one of them returned positive for West Nile. Pine says that notification quickly prompted the county to take action. Also, we had crews from our Public Works Department out here. They've been out here since about 3.30 this morning and began to follow the area so immediately what we could do we kicked into gear right away the bear county public works superintendent says his pesticide crews have been actively fogging targeting areas considered to be hot spots for mosquitoes they also go ahead and trap mosquitoes and that's how this mosquito was found now public work officials tell us that adult mosquitoes typically tend to lay their eggs in still or slow running water such as this and they use dunks like this one that lasts up to 180 days that are able to kill off the larva in the water. Emergency management crews from District 1 and 11 also participated in the campaign, placing flyers informing residents how to eliminate standing water sources. We do encourage all residents to, you know, wear mosquito repellent, empty out all your uh, standing water, because that's where most mosquitoes breed, uh, and to wear repellent and just to be careful. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Well, Joint Base San Antonio could get over $100 million if an appropriations bill is passed in Washington. The bill passed the Appropriations Committee, so now it goes to the House floor for consideration. As part of the bill, JBSA would get $115.8 million. That money would be used for several projects. It includes building facilities for basic training, and some of that money would go to a new F-16 Mission Training Center for the Air National Guard. Happy Friday! A plume of Saharan dust is going to be moving in for part of the weekend, but if you're hoping for outdoor activities this weekend, it looks pretty good. I'll be back with a look at rain chances Saturday and Sunday. And big news coming out of Team USA men's basketball. Breaking news, in fact. Larry's going to join us to break it down and who is making the big jump onto the squad. New coronavirus cases headed in the wrong direction. We're going to take a look at what is driving this surge after the break. Welcome back. Now to the latest on the pandemic. Things taking a turn here in the United States with nearly every state seeing a rise in COVID cases. Experts say the highly contagious Delta variant is what's to blame. It's accounting for more than half of the new cases. And as ABC's Rena Roy reports, health officials are warning even more variants could soon start popping up around the world. Los Angeles, once an epicenter of COVID-19, now doubling down on prevention efforts again, mandating masks indoors, even for those who are vaccinated. Masking indoors must again become a normal practice by all, regardless of vaccination status, 
so that we can stop the trends and level of, of transmission we're currently seeing. County officials reporting the highest COVID-19 numbers since early March. The Delta variant tearing through largely unvaccinated communities. Arkansas, Missouri, Florida and Nevada also hot spots labeled as high transmission states. And get that sleeve rolled up as soon as you can to protect yourself because there's going to be a lot of trouble coming in the next few weeks. And some vaccinated people are experiencing rare breakthrough infections, but officials say symptoms are much milder than they would have been without those shots. Sean Fruit and his wife tested positive for COVID-19 after traveling to Vegas. I'm pretty confident that if I hadn't had the boost from the vaccination, I might not be standing here talking to you right now. This Boston man also testing positive after a July 4th weekend trip. I started feeling raspy, a dry cough. Health experts still stressing the best form of protection is getting the shot. I think it should serve as a reminder to us that the variants are real. As some schools get ready to reopen, some parents are calling for mask mandates with only a quarter of American kids ages 12 to 15 fully immunized. We need to have a mask mandate back again. I am very nervous. My children will be wearing masks when they return. In Arizona's Chandler Unified School District, school is back on Wednesday and the state has made it illegal to mandate masks. The World Health Organization says that with much of the world still unvaccinated, there's a strong likelihood that new and possibly more dangerous variants of concern may pop up around the world, and they could be even more challenging to control. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Looking outside with live cam, we're, uh, is that dust? Is that yeah. humidity? Is that both of them? A little bit of both, but you're really seeing that Saharan dust, yeah, making the haze on the horizon there. We are dealing with another plume of Saharan dust. The aquifer though, down two tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. And as far as the pollen count goes, yes, you might feel a little itchy eyes from the Saharan dust, but the molds are really prominent out there today, moderate at 680. I wanna show you again, just a look outside here. You can see on the horizon how it's difficult to distinguish those puffy cumulus clouds. That's that Saharan dust. It's 84 degrees. South winds are breezy at 16 miles per hour, and it feels like it's near 90. Now, for the first time in a while, we're gonna have a fairly quiet weekend across the Texas coast. So if you wanna head out to Corpus Christi Bay, Rockport area. Just a slight chop on the waters. As far as Sunday goes, a small chance for rain as well. Our weekend forecast in San Antonio and a current look at air quality coming up after the break. Two pups are getting a second chance at life at being loved as well. That's right. And it's all thanks to San Antonio Humane Society. Dudley and Norbit were found roaming around the streets of San Antonio separately, but they did have one thing in common, a thigh bone fracture. We're looking for an active family, a loving home that can, you know, dedicate the time and the patience to complete their recovery journey by doing, you know, their exercises, their slow leash walks that they're going to be increasing progressively as their comfort levels permit. So somebody who's, you know, willing to take the time and dedication and get them fully recovered. On KSET.com, we have an article with the information that you need if you'd like Aww. to meet Dudley or Norbit and adopt either one of them. All right, take a look at this new park at Martin Luther King Park that opened today. HEB and Unilever joined the East Side Boys and Girls Club for the ribbon cutting. The playground named the Dream Park. Mayor Ron Nuremberg pointed out it's another sign of normalcy returning to our community. I think we can all just take a moment to pause and recognize and maybe even close our eyes and think about how long we've been waiting to hear that sound over there and see those sights of kids playing. So it's been a long time coming. The park features a bench with the words, I am the dream and the sidewalks also having inspirational messages. All right, so we see kids out and about. We saw a few clouds, but Sarah Spivey, is it gonna be a good day to say go uh, Texas tubing? 
Yeah, this weekend will be nice to, to hit the rivers, the Guadalupe or the Comal, and enjoy some time on the river if you can stand a little bit of Saharan dust in the air. And for most folks, uh, it'll just be pretty mild. Now, we are currently seeing a plume increase, so uh, through tomorrow, we'll have some Saharan dust in the air. But as you can see, by Sunday, that's going to really start to fizzle out. So we'll be all right by Sunday afternoon. Uh, but you can see right now that 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 Saharan dust is on the horizon, making for a haze. Hard to distinguish the puffy cumulus clouds off in the distance. And so that could cause some allergy like symptoms. But so far, the air quality is actually just fine. Uh, it's one step down from good, so it's moderate. It's not quite unhealthy for those who are sensitive to it yet. We'll keep you updated, and the forecast for the rest of the uh, day for the air quality remains moderate as well. So again, just for those who are sensitive to it, some allergy-like symptoms with your eyes maybe being a bit itchy. All right, on the satellite imagery, you can see very clearly we've got puffy cumulus clouds just about everywhere. These will thin out even further into the remainder of the afternoon, and we'll have mostly sunny skies. A wider view here. Kerrville and Rock Springs stayed cloudier for longer. They're also at higher elevations, so a touch cooler than San Antonio. 81 in Rock Springs, 82 in Kerrville. It's 84 in San Antonio. 90 already in Del Rio, 90 in Catula, 89 in Pleasanton, and 87 in Gonzales. We do have high humidity out there, so that 84 actually feels more like 90 degrees. And so throughout the rest of the afternoon, it'll feel about 5 degrees warmer than what the thermometer actually reads it feels close to 100 degrees down in Laredo now on the radar it's quiet around San Antonio it's expected to remain quiet for the remainder of the day but the rain is off to the east toward Houston and along I-10 a couple of our coastal communities like out to Gonzales Lavaca County Carnes County DeWitt County they could see one or two passing showers this afternoon but as for our high temperatures it's going to be hot toward Del Rio this afternoon 100 degrees more mild around San Antonio, but still toasty in the low 90s. And again, remember that heat index will make it feel uh, closer to 95, 96. So our weather pattern around Texas, we've got some showers up in North Texas. Those are not going to make it to us in San Antonio. Why? Because we have a high pressure system over South Texas. High means dry, and that's going to help keep us dry for about the next 48 hours at least. And potentially on Sunday, we won't see any rain as well. So let me take you through the future cast tomorrow, Saturday, a, a couple of coastal showers are possible. It'll be mostly sunny in 92. And then on Sunday, there are some indications that we could get a bit of a sea breeze and we could have some pop up showers and storms in the afternoon. But the chance for rain is only 20% and again, a high temperature in the low 90s. So this weekend going to be great for summertime activities outdoors. But we are not going to warm up all that much more. And here's the reason why a low pressure system is going to settle over Texas Tuesday through Thursday, bringing us more July rain here in San Antonio. And it's going to keep our temperatures from soaring into the triple digits. In fact, we'll get down back into the upper 80s for the highs Tuesday through Thursday. We'll also be on the watch for some pockets of heavy rain. Uh, again, it's an interesting July. We we have seen a good amount of rain. We've not seen 100 degrees yet, and I don't think we're going to see 100 degrees for the whole month, Ursula and Max. This truly is bizarre for <laughs> July. Thank you. <laughs> All right. As Sarah said, it's an interesting July, not only for the weather, but also for sports. We have some breaking news. Keldon Johnson has been added to Team USA. He's 21 years old, and now he can say he's a USA Olympic basketball player. How cool is that? When he joined the select team earlier this month, he said his goal was to play in the Olympics for the big boys. His dream is about to come true. And in the NBA, Chris Paul says the Suns game for a loss is on him. Coming up. I was hoping he was going to have to answer every question. <laughs> uh, but as far as just, you know, the limelight, whatever, um, I really don't care about it too much. Like it or not, Chris Middleton has put himself in the limelight during the NBA Finals and Big Board Sports.
ships after he entered health and safety protocols due to COVID-19 safety, of course. Jeremy Grant was also placed in the protocol out of caution, though Coach Pop is optimistic that the forward would be able to remain with the team. And to be as safe as possible, Team USA canceled their exhibition game tonight against Australia. As far as Bradley's concerned, I'm, I'm dying for him. Uh, we all are. You know, since he's a little kid, this has been a dream of his. And uh, he was playing great. He was having fun. Uh, you know, being a big part of us coming together chemistry-wise and as a family. And so for him and for his family, immediate family, uh, it's devastating. So uh, we just feel horrible about it. Committing to the Olympics is great, but it's a huge commitment for these guys, costing them time with family during the NBA offseason. Draymond Green has a great idea when it comes to rewarding Bill for his time with Team USA. To see that opportunity taken away, uh, you can only sympathize with Brad and hope that, you know, in understanding what is, has taken place over the course of, like I said, the last 17, 18 months that, you know, if we can accomplish our ultimate goal, which is going out to win a gold medal, you'd hope he still gets that gold medal because he did make that commitment to this team, uh, to this country. Cavaliers forward Kevin Love has withdrawn from Team USA and will not travel to Tokyo for the summer games. Love is coming back from a right calf injury he suffered during the NBA season and said he's not at peak performance. And the Woj is reporting via Twitter that Spurs Kelton Johnson and the Nuggets JaVale McGee will replace Bradley Bill and Kevin Love on Team USA roster for the upcoming Olympics. Before that, he tweeted this morning there's significant support and momentum for Johnson to be added to the 12-man roster, and Johnson has developed into a favorite of decision makers and staff. Phoenix Suns guard Chris Paul is not happy with his game four, game four performance, a 109-103 win by the Bucks to even the series of two games all. In that contest, the Suns turned the ball over 17 times, leading to a whopping 24 points for Milwaukee. It was me, I had five of them. You know what I mean? It was bad decision making. Um, timely, we down two, and I try to cross over right there, slip, turn it over. I had some bad passes in the first half. You know what I mean? They they got you know a significant amount uh, more shots than us, and so you know for me, I got to take care of the ball. If we we got 17 turnovers. We shoot the ball too well not to have those opportunities to score. Game five is tomorrow night at eight in Phoenix, and you can watch it here on KSAT 12. Back to the Keldon Johnson news. What do you think he brings to Team USA? Uh, a lot of energy, a lot of aggression out there on the court, and just a motor that doesn't stop. All right. Plus, we all know Pop knows him well. So. That's true, part of the decision making. Exactly, it pays the play for the Spurs. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Creating safer highways. That's the goal of a text dot initiative coming up in the next half hour. Stephen Cavazos takes a look at the HERO program, how it's been able to help traffic flow in the Alamo City. And Western Europe seeing some of the most devastating floods in decades. And it's not the only extreme weather even hitting that specific region. We have the details after the break. In Oregon, fire crews scrambling to get a handle of an out of control wildfire. The bootleg fire now spreading about four miles a day and windy conditions are only fueling those flames. Authorities expanding evacuations late Thursday along the eastern edge of the bootleg fire. Right now, this is the largest wildfire in the U.S. The fire crews are worried it could grow even larger and then merge with another fire. Dozens more fires were burning in 12 states. The newest one is in Paradise, California, the site of the deadliest wildfire in U.S. history. That fire does not pose a big risk at the moment. That's right. And search and rescue efforts underway in Germany and Belgium after massive flash floods tore through their region. Officials say at least 100 people died. And as ABC's Elizabeth Scholze explains, hundreds more are still missing. Devastating scenes across Western Europe from the region's worst flooding in decades. 
Days of torrential rain causing flash floods. Rushing water engulfing towns in Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands. Sweeping away cars and destroying homes. And the rain just kept coming, kept coming and then uh, through all, throughout the night it just kept coming down and um, next morning we, we woke up to what you see here. Authorities say at least 100 people are dead and 1,300 still missing. Rescuers scrambling to reach remote areas cut off by crumbled infrastructure. And it was dark because there was no um, um, no light, no, st no uh, power, and um, yeah, there was also no phone connections. In this town in western Germany, debris overtaking the streets, windows blasted out in shops. This man says water was running so fast there was no time to save any of his belongings. And in eastern Belgium, this woman shows how high the floodwaters reached as she was forced to flee her home. The floods overlapping with drought and severe heat in the region. Extreme weather events scientists say are becoming more common because of climate change. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who was at the White House meeting with President Biden Thursday, said in a statement, the federal government will help with the rescue efforts in any way possible. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And here at home, what we're looking at is uh, kind of in between weather. We're mostly concerned about dust, not really rain at the moment. Yeah, that's right. And you know who you are if you're particularly sensitive to the seasonable Saharan dust that has moved in. Saharan dust is in the air typically from June through September. And so again, it's something we're used to and just another one of those allergens that we have to deal with. Let's take a look outside and you can see that dust on the horizon there very clearly because those cumulus clouds kind of disappear into each other and just look like haze on the horizon. 84 degrees out there right now and it feels like 90 because we've got high humidity south winds at about 16 miles per hour speaking of that humidity the ground is soaked from recent rains and that's why we're continuing to see humidity be high because as we get some of that daytime heating that water from the ground is evaporating back into the air so that's why we're humid uh, and on top of that we've got a steady wind from the south and from the southeast bringing in more gulf of mexico moisture it's pretty breezy out there gusts of up to 25 miles per hour and through the afternoon our highs should reach the low 90s but feeling about five degrees warmer than what you read on the map here uh, because of those heat index values now for the weekend if you want to head out to the guadalupe or the comal it looks pretty good you know we're finally going to have a weekend here where we can kind of enjoy summertime activities without worrying about much rain 92 tomorrow for the high and then on sunday 92 as well well, and we do have a chance of 20% for a pop up downpour in the afternoon. So again, go floating, find a way to stay cool. And I'll be back with a look at another rain chance for us next week in just a few minutes. Ursula Max. Thank you, Sarah. The roads can be a dangerous place for drivers, but text out San Antonio waits to make sure there is a hero always there. The Highway Emergency Response Operator Program saw a 15% increase in the number of incidents last Tuesday. Most likely it was due to all the rainfall. Stephen Cavazos explains how the program continues to keep the roadways safe, rain or shine. Whether it's clearing a crash, debris on the road, or helping a stranded driver along the highway, TxDOT heroes are there day and night. In the program, we actually patrol. Uh, the highways of San Antonio. So we're looking for those things that may impact traffic. The Highway Emergency Response Operator Program was brought to San Antonio in August of last year and is funded through TxDOT, the City of San Antonio, Bear County, and the Alamo Area Metropolitan Planning Organization. Since then, HERO responds roughly to 3,000 incidents a month. That ranges from clearing roadways to roadside assistance. Those services can be anything from a tire change, giving water to a uh, overheating vehicle, jump starting. Services like that are currently provided along 239 miles of highway in the greater San Antonio area. The goal of the program is to create safer highways by keeping traffic flowing smoothly, which isn't always easy when weather becomes a problem. Whenever we see the rain, it just, uh, um, I guess, magnifies the issues that are already there during dry weather. 167 incidents were reported during last Tuesday's rainfall, which Giannotti says kept heroes busy and made their work more important. The quicker we can clear an incident, 
the less chance we have of a secondary crash happening. Giannotti says the rainfall led to some treacherous roadways, but he believes the busy times are proof that a program like Hero was needed in the Alamo City. You know, safety is our, is our priority every day, and the safety of the traveling public is always our, our top concern. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. And the Federal Aviation Administration ordering Boeing to inspect its 737 planes, all due to a safety risk involving a critical switch that controls cabin air pressure. So the order affects over 2,500 Boeing 737s in the United States, 9,300 jets around the world. The FAA says a switch failure could prevent the altitude warning system from activating if the cabin is over 10,000 feet in the air. At that point, oxygen levels could become dangerously low. The FAA order does not ground the 737s, but the mandate does require airlines to test the switches and replace them as needed. All right, so a lot to come here on the news at noon, including a local football star making a big commitment. Larry joins us with an inside look. Welcome back and happy Friday. So much going on in the news and in the weather. We have not only lower chance of storms, but also Sarah Saharan dust. Yeah, floating weather. Floating weather on the rivers. Yeah, we're going to float <laughs> on the rivers, right? Uh, but we are going to have really nice weather this weekend to enjoy some time outdoors. The aquifer is down two tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours, but it's still doing well because of recent rains, eight feet above the monthly average. In the pollen count, molds are elevated. They're moderate at 680, but as Ursula and Max were displaying, there is some Saharan dust in the air. So coming up in the forecast, we'll talk about when and this latest plume of Saharan dust will dissipate. And of course, I'll have a look at what you can expect for Saturday and Sunday and your weekend ahead. Welcome back and happy Friday. Oh, Sarah Spivey. Hey, I have a question for y'all. I have a question. For uh oh, is it a quiz? No, it's not. Okay, good. Don't oh. worry about it. It sh sh should be easy. Okay, if you could pick floating on the rivers, mm -hmm. Pool time or going to the beach this weekend, which oh. one would you pick? Um, I'm I'm always up for the beach. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, always. cool. Max? I'm going pool. Nice. Efficiency. That makes sense. Well, no matter what right you inside. pick, no matter what you pick, the weather's going to be great for oh, those perfect. activities. <laughs> yeah, you'll just remember, need to remember the sunscreen, of course, because we're going to have plenty of sun this weekend. Outside right now, you can see, as we've been pointing out over the entirety of the show, the Saharan dust on the horizon there, making for a bit of a haze and perhaps some allergy-like conditions for some folks. 84 degrees outside right now. We've got puffy cumulus clouds out there. Not only is it humid with dew points in the 70s and we've got a heat index of 90 degrees, but it's also breezy, so that helps out a little bit. Winds from the south at about 15 miles per hour. So here's uh, the Saharan dust forecast for the weekend. We're actually going to see this plume kind of thicken up and stick around through tomorrow through Saturday, but by the end of Sunday, it'll start to thin out quite a bit. And in fact, we won't really have to deal with another plume of Saharan dust for at least another five to seven days. So uh, just we're really only going to have to deal with the dust for another 48 hours or so. Outside with the visible satellite, you can see those puffy cumulus cloud. I love this satellite picture because you can almost pick out each individual cloud from space. Very beautiful to see that. It's more clear though off to the west. So Del Rio, Eagle Pass, totally sunny skies. These areas have not seen as much rain as we have in San Antonio, so the ground is not quite as saturated out there. And uh, the high temperatures for Del Rio this afternoon are going to be near 100. So 90 right now in Del Rio, 90 in Laredo, 88 in New Braunfels, 89 in Gonzales. It's 84 here in San Antonio. And we can expect uh, temperatures to rise slightly into the low 90s for the remainder of the day for us. And again, we, we do have a breeze out there. Winds are from the south or southeast at about 10 to 15, gusting up to 20 to 25 miles per hour, really tapping into that Gulf of Mexico moisture. And that's why we have that humidity out there. So for the rest of the day, we're going to have mostly sunny skies into the afternoon, 91 for the high, a 10% chance for a coastal shower, and it's going to be breezy. Sun will set at 836, and it'll be mild in the evening. Let's say you have a Friday night date night on tap. Should be really nice if you want to sit in those restaurants outside or inside. Either way is going to be fine. Uh, 
because we're going to have mild temperatures, mostly clear skies and a pretty comfortable evening on the weather pattern. Some rain up in North Texas, but not here in San Antonio because we've got this um, high pressure system creating sinking air and preventing us from seeing rain. That'll be with us for about the next 48 hours or so. So tomorrow for your Saturday, pretty much a carbon copy of today's weather. A high temperature of 92, mostly sunny skies in the afternoon. And then on Sunday, I'm going to put a little asterisk next to Sunday because we do have a chance for some coastal showers and, and those could end up making their way to the I-35 corridor in the afternoon. So we do have a 20% chance for an afternoon downpour on Sunday, but most of the day on Sunday is going to be just fine for outdoor activities. Fairly quiet on Monday, but then our weather pattern gets active again for July with a low pressure system uh, overhead Tuesday through Thursday. There could be pockets of up to two inches of rain when all is said and done from Tuesday to Thursday, as we'll see a chance for scattered showers and a few storms as well. Once again, we're not concerned about severe weather, but these could be healthy rain producers and it's going to keep our temperatures from getting much hotter from where they are right now. In fact, we'll only be in the upper 80s Tuesday through Thursday. No triple digits in sight. That's all right in my book. We might even have to wait until August to see if our first 100 degree day uh, this year, which is a welcome change. Very different type of summer we're having. Thank you. All right. You know what else comes in August? We got college football, football. coming in August. Yeah. Texas is, uh, what, about seven weeks away from kicking off the season under their new head football coach, Steve Sarkeesian. And yesterday he got to meet with the media during Big 12 media days. And he says you just can't sprinkle any type of magic dust to have a successful season. And in boxing, Charlo and Castaño are ready to fight. Coming up. No magic dust? Steve Sarkeesian made his first appearance at the Big 12 Media Days in Arlington as the head coach of the Texas Longhorns. And one of the first questions he fielded is, did he take a look at the Longhorns football program as an outsider to figure out why things were not working in Austin since 2009? And has he discovered what some of the secrets might be? The point I've been trying to make is focus on us and what we're doing and not necessarily what didn't work before, but what are we going to do to make it work this time? Uh, and the point of all of that is we can't sit back and relax and think because we've got a great stadium, because we've got great resources, because we've got the five-star, four-star players that we just sprinkle a little magical fairy dust and all of a sudden we're a really good football team. When it comes to a new starting quarterback, Sarkeesian says he won't make a decision on either Casey Thompson or Hudson Card until training camp. O'Connor Panthers senior quarterback John Locke is a talented football player. The past two seasons, he's played receiver for the Panthers, catching 41 passes for 640 yards with six touchdowns. This season, he's QB1. But once he goes to the next level, he's going to line up as a tight end for Colorado State University. Last week, he verbally committed to the Rams, and yesterday, we asked him why. You know, like I said, I just I really fell in love with the coaching staff up there. The head coach, Coach, coach Adazio, really reminds me of my own head coach, Coach Molesky, and their position coach actually played in the NFL as a tight end, and so I feel like there's a lot of credibility there, and he's a really good guy, and so I feel like I can take my talents even further through Colorado State, and Colorado State's going to do some good things here in a couple of years. Locke is the second 2022 tight end commitment for CSU and the fourth Texas commitment for the Rams during this recruiting cycle. For the first time since the first loss of his boxing career, Mario Badio sat down with us yesterday. It's his first one-on-one -on -one interview since Cervante Davis TKO victor in the 11th round following his third knockdown of Badio's. And Mario admitted he didn't even remember the second knockdown. He caught me with something I, I didn't even really see. And then, you know, that's the first time I got dropped. And uh, actually, I didn't even realize I got dropped the second time until l later that, that night. Okay. Yeah, so like, to me, it felt like I just got dropped once and then um, again with the body shot. But um, like all, all that seemed like a blur, you know? I mean, it was the first time I had ever touched the canvas. It was, uh, it was a new experience um, for me. You can hear more of our interview with Mario Barrios this Sunday night on Instant Replay. Feeling the pressure? Nah, that's funny. I, I don't have no pressure on me, man. I've been here so many times in my life, you know, I've been boxing since I was eight years old.
That's funny. Unified World Champion Jamil Charlo laughed at that question. He feels no pressure ahead of his title showdown with WBO <laughs> World Champion Brian Castaño Saturday night at the AT&T Center. And they met face to face at the final press conference yesterday at the Thompson San Antonio Riverwalk. And in double A baseball, the missions beat the hook seven to five. The win ends an eight game road losing streak for San Antonio. All right, so I think they're what 30 and 32 now. Yes. All right. A lot of season left. Absolutely. They can All still right. make a move. I like the way you're thinking. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. And speaking of moves, they got some over at SA Live today. Uh, yes, you're going to be moving on up with your bath or shower. Yeah, how about $10,000 mm -hmm. in the win to do a whole makeover of that? Oh, That'd yes, nice. we are going to tell you how to score that. That would be like magic. Mm -hmm. Speaking of magic, David uh, Kovac is here with the Magician's Agency. And wow, you've got your hands full. Yes, I do. Sometimes I, I fool myself, my kid. <laughs> and those are just stuck to your hands. Well, indeed, yeah. We'll get to the bottom of this curious mystery in just about a moment or so but um, yeah in the meantime I uh, like to say that amazing things happen every day yeah <laughs> all right speaking of magic it takes more than magic to get in good shape it takes hard work right oh uh, yes and Joseph Brooks from next level personal training is here and you're gonna box it up and put us through some moves right all right. Throw it. <laughs> and something very easy to do and even for beginners as well okay after that you're gonna get a little bit hungry and Sean Wen with pinch boil is here and what you got for us you got some Vietnamese noodle salad oh, nice that's fresh kind of you know summery vibe and you're located downtown but you've got a new location opening up right new location opening up in Alamo Heights. Okay, we're yeah. going to tell you exactly where that is and what's on the menu, and I can't wait to taste all of that. And of course, the Summer Olympics is coming up. We're going to tell you about a local athlete who is going to compete. Yeah, she is the oldest to be participating in judo for the American team, and uh, somebody who participates in judo is called a judoka. I know, I, I did not know that until you told me that earlier. Didn't know that, because Jen told me that. <laughs> and we got a big festival going on out here at Market Square, a lot today on this Friday edition. <laughs> All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.